it's the car that I saw when I was riding off the side of the road after my dad had just been shot. One of the many images that Michaela Clavier says she will never get out of her head. I saw a whole lot. A sketch she drew after witnessing her father die before her eyes when she was just nine years old. He was a really nice man. He didn't deserve to die. October 24th, 2015. Now they had a fun-filled day planned. The kids are spending a day with dad while mom is out of town. You ready? Melody Clavier says her husband Nick was a fun parent. Hang on, boy. Who she says loved his four children and couldn't wait to take them fishing. They had their fishing poles loaded up. They were en route, ready to go. But before they ever got there, Nick would be shot in the head while driving on this stretch of Hall Street Road. And I heard a loud bang. I looked over, I saw my dad. He was bleeding and blood was going everywhere because his foot was on the accelerator <gasps> and he was kind of leaned over onto the steering wheel. The car went off the road and struck a tree and while Michaela tried to stop her father's bleeding, she knew she had to get her sister Emily and brothers Jacob and Hollis to safety. After getting them out of the car, she led them through these woods to a nearby church for help. In that moment, I was thinking um, that somebody had tried to hurt us or my dad. And all I knew was I had to be strong for my little siblings. It's hard to imagine how, <laughs> how they even made it. A year and a half later, for the very first time, Melody and visits the site where her family's life was forever changed. A spot where the Chesterfield Police Department says Nick's own gun accidentally discharged. But one of the only eyewitnesses that day says otherwise. I saw the guy pointing a gun and I saw the car, but I didn't catch the license plate. Melody says she requested that detectives re-interview the children and reopen the case, but she says police told her they did not want to traumatize the kids. I told him, with all due respect, sir, my children saw their father's head blown off. The damage has been done. She was losing hope until ballistics from the state medical examiner's office came back on the bullet recovered from Nick's brain. The markings on the bullet indicated that it could not have been fired from the 380 pistol recovered from the vehicle. It makes it impossible to exclude homicide. So when the ballistics came back to me, you know, I, it was excitement. After the state medical examiner released a report about her husband's death, Melody Clavier was sure that Chesterfield police would reopen the case. Because I felt like this is finally going to be taken care of. This is, this is what I've been waiting for. Detectives had ruled that Nick Clavier had accidentally shot himself while driving with his kids in the car in October of 2015. But the ballistics dispute that because the bullet that killed him would not fit into his gun. Still, Melody says police had an explanation. They said that the bullet could have been from a gun range that he may have left in the chamber and forgot about. And that would be why it didn't match any of the bullets that he owned. This is the gun and the bullet. Gun expert Marlon Dance agrees with the medical examiner's finding. There's no way that this gun that was recovered out of that car could have shot this bullet. And while the state report says that the wound path is very unusual for a self-inflicted wound, an FBI profiler indicated factors which could support suicide. More than a year after Nick's death, the ME changed the cause of his death from accidental to undetermined, but the case still remains closed. The science is reflecting a story that the child sitting next to him tells. And to me, I don't know how you could leave it closed. 
Clavier wants her husband to be remembered as the doting dad she says he was, not the dad capable of putting his children in harm's way. Children who will never celebrate another birthday with him. Or hear him say, I love you again. I want for his name not to be portrayed as a man that would jeopardize his children when that's not the case. While a tearful Michaela just wants to be heard. I think they owe it to me any time. I really think they should believe me. So we knew, and so that way we didn't have to spend our whole life knowing that maybe someone was trying to hurt all of us, and he's still out there. Chesterfield County Police declined our request for an interview, but released the following statement that reads, in part, given the totality of the circumstances, the Chesterfield County Police Department does not believe that Mr. Clavier died as a result of a homicide. The police department has cleared this death investigation as an accidental death. As in any investigation, we will investigate any new leads or tips that come in. Melody Clavier says she respects the department, but she says that they owe it to the public and her family to keep this case open. Working for you, Laura French, CBS 6 News. That woman met with detectives this morning as we reported the family of Nick Clavier wants his death investigation reopened after a ballistics report showed that the bullet recovered from his brain did not match the gun that was recovered from his vehicle. His 11-year-old daughter, Michaela, says her father was shot after she says a vehicle pulled up to them on their way to a fishing trip in October 2015. Michaela ran to a nearby church to get her and her three siblings help. Multiple people who cared for the kids that day reached out to me after seeing our investigation. Women who cared for the kids say they were running from the accident scene screaming for help and said that someone had just shot their father. Every last one of them um, indicated that there was someone else involved. It feels very frustrating and stressful all the time, not knowing if they believe me or not. And as we mentioned, a woman who cared for the kids says that she met with detectives just this morning to provide details from that day. She says she spent hours trying to comfort the kids who she says were in shock. Meanwhile, the family contacted Senator Amanda Chase's office. Chase did confirm to us today that they have requested more information from police. Now, CBS 6 has submitted freedom of information requests with the Chesterfield Police Department, as well as the Department of Forensic Science. Both have denied our request, citing that these were criminal investigation files. We have also reached out to the county administrator and the attorney general. Police have met with the office of the chief medical examiner on numerous occasions, they tell us, and they have cleared this death investigation as accidental. Working for you in the newsroom, Laura French, CBS 6 News. Will you sit down? I have something to tell you. Michaela Clavier returns home from school Tuesday. They are going to move the case to a pending status. To news she's been waiting to hear for more than a year and a half. Tell me your first reaction to this news. Um, well, really happy and excited. Happiness was not the emotion the 11 year old expressed as she sat on this same couch with CBS 6 earlier this month. Because he was really nice man. He didn't deserve to die. October 24th, 2015, the then nine-year-old and her three siblings left for a fishing trip with dad when their lives would forever change on this stretch of Hall Street Road. I saw the guy pointing a gun and I saw the car. This car that she would sketch after her father, Nick Clavier, died. The person inside, Michaela says, shot and killed her dad before they crashed into these woods. But police ruled Clavier shot himself after his own gun accidentally discharged. Then a CBS 6 investigation revealed ballistics determined the bullet retrieved from Nick's brain did not match his gun. Our report led to these messages from viewers who were the first to aid the kids the day of the accident. One of those witnesses met with investigators Monday and says she informed them that the kids stated from the very beginning someone shot their dad. I don't think we could have gotten to the point where we are now um, w without without you guys. The, um, the publicity and stuff is what 
triggered the first responders to even know to come forward. Chesterfield Police released the following statement. Colonel Dupuy has asked for a review of the case in light of new statements. Therefore, we have changed the status of the case from cleared to pending while we investigate further. They said their um, number one priority is, is uh, to find the truth. I do thank them for, at this point, being willing to go ahead and take a, a, a deeper look into things. Um, I, I do wish that it had happened sooner. <laughs> Um, but I, I'm glad at this point that they are, they are being willing to, to work with us on this. Detectives have also agreed to re-interview Michaela. It feels like a whole lot has been lifted. Like, I feel so much more better. As for how her father would feel? He would say, um, I'm so proud of you for doing this. Um, you're going to make such a big difference in the world. Melody says since our story aired, she's seen a huge change in Michaela. She says her daughter finally feels like she's being heard and vindicated. The next step, she says, is Michaela's interview with detectives, and they will take it from there. Police encourage anyone who may have information on this case to call Crime Solvers at 804-748-0660. Working for you tonight, Laura French, CBS 6 News. So this is actually the room that the children come and are interviewed in. A safe space inside the Children's Advocacy Center in Henrico County. He caught us a catfish. Where these four children will soon be able to talk openly. Mm, that we miss him. About the day their mother has been fighting to learn more about for more than a year and a half. It sounds like they're, they're taking a more detailed look into things um, and with fresh eyes. And Melody Clavier says it all starts with the FBI and these set of eyes. I saw a whole lot. That were fixed upon their father when he was fatally shot in the head while driving with them on Hall Street Road in October 2015. Police determined that Nick Clavier's own gun accidentally discharged inside his car. But his daughter Michaela says the bullet was fired by someone who pulled up next to them in this vehicle which she later sketched. I saw the guy pointing a gun. I heard a loud noise. I looked over, I saw my dad. He was bleeding and blood was going everywhere. Michaela and her siblings will get another chance to discuss that painful day, June 22nd, when they are re-interviewed inside these four walls alongside a therapy dog from Washington, D.C. and a forensic investigator. She's coming in from out of state. Um, they're they called her in because she is kind of top in her field. And um, that's why FBI is, is in on this with Chesterfield because they had more resources, which really is great news to me. News that came after a CBS 6 investigation revealed that ballistics determined the bullet retrieved from Nick's brain did not match his gun. Less than two weeks later, the Chesterfield Police Department changed the status of the case from cleared to pending a lot more of a um, structural plan, whereas before, um, you know, it, it, it was what it was. It was just a closed case. <laughs> and so the fact that there is a plan being set and that steps are being made, it's, it's a very reassuring feeling. And this center says the kids can be reassured in this environment free of pressure as they're asked open-ended questions. So it is recorded. With police investigators watching from a nearby room. They don't feel like they're in a police station or an office building. Um, it's kind of meant to feel homey. Um, so they feel really comfortable here. <laughs> and Melody says she can take comfort knowing that her kids are now thriving because their voices are being heard. If nothing ever comes of this, um, it has brought healing to our family, especially Michaela, who really just, she wanted to feel validated. She wanted to feel as though somebody was listening.
Melody says she has confidence in the Chesterfield Police Department and hopes her children's interviews will lead them to more answers as to what happened that day. If you have any information about this case, you are asked to call Crime Solvers at 804-748-0660. Working for you in the studio, Laura French, CBS 6 News. With metal detectors and shovels in hand, Chesterfield police are digging for clues in a field cleared by investigators. A patch of woods that two years earlier was the scene of a shooting investigation. Really, this is the only way that we can say that we've actually done everything we could um, logically to find out where the truth is in all this. It's that truth Melody Clavier has been searching for since the October 2015 day. Her husband Nick was found shot in the head after crashing down this embankment into this now marked tree off Hull Street Road with his four children inside the car. In my heart, um, you know, obviously what happened was the story I've been told over and over by my children, um, which was that you know, somebody shot him. I saw the guy pointing a gun. I heard a loud noise. I looked over, I saw my dad. He was bleeding and blood was going everywhere. After this May interview with Clavier's daughter, Michaela, police changed the status of the case from cleared to pending. A CBS 6 investigation revealed ballistics determined the bullet recovered from Clavier's brain did not match his gun. A gun police initially ruled accidentally misfired inside the vehicle. But Michaela, who was in the passenger seat that day, says it came from a vehicle she would later sketch. We just wanted to make sure that we were being good to our, our word and, and true to our word. You know, we, we said that we would do a thorough review and that's exactly what we wanted to do. And, you know, we wanted to come back to where, where things happened and, you know, take apart every aspect of this case. As investigators comb through every inch of where this husband and father's life was about to come to an end and recreate the events of that day, his family hopes taking this look back will help them move forward. I might finally have answers one day. It's incredibly important to me and really genuinely means a lot. Probably one of the best Christmas gifts I'll get. Melody says in the end, she hopes that justice will be served so that her children don't have to worry that somebody is out there. Working for you in Chesterfield County tonight, Laura French, CBS 6 News. That's your starting point. You're going to want to work from there out. A starting point that retired Chesterfield Police Captain Steve Neal says could help lead to closure for this family. They want to try to cover every inch of ground. Ground that the Chesterfield Police Department cleared and revisited Friday after more than two years. As they dug for clues in the renewed death investigation of Nick Clavier. Really, this is the only way that we can say that we've actually done everything we could um, logically to find out where the truth is. It's that truth the Clavier family has been seeking since the October 2015 day this husband and father was found shot in the head. So he was a really nice man. He didn't deserve to die. Orange paint now marks the spot where Nick's vehicle crashed with his four children inside. In my heart, um, you know, obviously what happened was the story I've been told over and over by my children. I saw the guy pointing a gun. Which was that? I heard a loud noise. Somebody shot him. I looked over, I saw my dad. He was bleeding and blood was going everywhere. Police initially ruled the death as an accident, but changed the status of the case from cleared to pending after a CBS 6 investigation revealed ballistics determined the bullet recovered from Clavier's brain did not match his gun. But Michaela, who was in the passenger seat that day, says it came from a vehicle she would later sketch. And the fact that there's a gun that is not on scene, I don't think there's any way in the world you can rule out homicide. But they're going to have to uh, examine everything they have, and then they're going to have to draw a conclusion as to whether they think it was a homicide, a suicide, or an accidental death. Another weapon is just one of the items Neil believes police were searching for as they spent six hours combing through every inch of these woods. 
It's a case that he says has the most unusual set of circumstances he's seen in his 40-year career. Either this was a homicide and the shooter retained a weapon, or it means that there is another weapon that they did not find, or it could possibly mean that there's another weapon that somebody removed from the scene before police arrived. Regardless, Neil says, you can't ignore the science and must take this look back to move forward. And the forensic evidence, uh, that's the reason why we do it, to make sure that it, it corroborates what we thought we saw at the scene. And if you find a case where it doesn't match, like in this case, then that tells us we need to go in another direction. We need to look somewhere else. It would be amazing if, you know, we could have justice brought for this, if something was found to where, you know, a guilty party could be brought to justice. Um, that would be huge, you know. My kids wouldn't have to worry about who's still out there. Neil says while he recognizes that the more time that passes, the less likely investigators are to find new evidence, he does think that there is a good chance that this case will be solved due to the media attention that it has generated. From his experience, he's certain that the public does not know everything that law enforcement knows about the case. He commends the department for taking the second look that they have on this case, even if that means it turns out that mistakes were made. Working for you in the studio tonight, Laura French, CBS 6 News.